Hey guys, I'm Chris Buck, and a very warm welcome to Friday Fretworks, and this week, single pickup guitars. Limiting or liberating? <laughs> I might have mentioned it once or twice, but over the last few months I've been back and forth switching them with my band Cardinal Black, recording our second record. Tour dates for that upcoming record somewhere on screen now if you want to check those out, but we've been back and forth the truly most incredible studio. It's called Powerplay and it's located just outside of Zurich in Switzerland. Some truly holy grail level of unobtainium gear dotted around that place, but for all of the truly incredible gear, one guitar that I found myself particularly gravitating towards for all of those sessions was a somewhat humble 57 Gibson Les Paul Jr. TV Yellow that, obviously, used to belong to Keith Richards. Now, without really thinking about it, it kind of became one of my go-to guitars for the record, for both rhythm and lead work. Needless to say, it plays well and it sounds fantastic, but having spent the last few weeks unsuccessfully to date trawling through Reverb and eBay, looking for a Les Paul Jr. that piques my interest, kind of starting to wonder whether there may in actual fact be something slightly deeper at play. I've always avoided buying a single pickup guitar for fear of it being limiting or not particularly versatile, but having just used one for the bulk of a record, I'm starting to wonder whether they may in actual fact be some of the best, most versatile guitars out there. So needless to say, I've never actually owned a single pickup guitar. I've played plenty of amazing ones, especially on this YouTube channel, but even now with such a strong hankering for a Les Paul Jr., some part of me is still slightly reticent at the thought of spending a decent amount of money on a guitar with just one pickup, when I could probably get a guitar with two pickups or three pickups or slightly more appointments for in all reality, probably slightly less money. It's a bit of a paradox, but having spent a good number of weeks and months now digging into that 57 Junior, it has been a total education in terms of not necessarily the versatility of a single pickup guitar per se, but the way in which it makes you play and adapt and really utilize the volume and tone controls. Now, I'm very much guilty of not really practicing what I preach when I espouse the benefits or the merits of a tone control. Take one look at my rev style, you'll see that I work the volume control pretty much constantly. The missing paint is very much testament to that, but 
In all reality, I don't use the tone control anywhere near as much as I should. In actual fact, when I spec'd that guitar, I actually had it with two volume controls initially. Such was my knowledge that with the best will in the world, I probably wasn't going to use the tone control. I love the sound of the bridge pickup, I love the neck, I love the both combined. I, I love the way that it cleans up with clarity but still gets subtly darker. There are so many beautiful sounds within that guitar that, in all honesty, I've never really found myself particularly needing the tone control. But if you're playing a single pickup guitar, it is a totally different ball game. The tone control is as important, if not actually more so, I would say, than its volume control, at least if you want to get the best out of it. And to that end, there is actually quite a lot to be said for a guitar that limits you in some capacity or makes you reevaluate what you need to do to get the best out of it. Now, I've spoken about it in the past, but one guitar that I really regret not buying when I had the chance was a 1960 Gibson Melody Maker. It was for sale here in the UK at ATB Guitars in, I think, early 2022. Now, as with most vintage guitars, I've no doubt its stock has risen somewhat since that video. But for a guitar which so many dismiss because of its single pickup, it was a truly mesmeric, absolutely brilliant guitar. And as I said, really regret not taking the plunge when I had the chance. <laughs> Now, needless to say, Gibson don't have a monopoly on single pickup guitars. As we know, it was, of course, Fender, in the solid body realm at the very least, which led the charge with the Esquire, introduced in early 1950. Of course, a guitar that we've come to know and love, it's two pickup younger brother, the Telecaster, only two years later in 1952, but as much as Leo may have sensed that the future of electric guitar didn't lie solely with arch tops, it needs to be acknowledged that the first Spanish-style electric guitar was introduced by Gibson in 1936 in the shape of the ES-150. Previous flagship models like the Gibson L5 would fall by the wayside as the ES-150 and its Charlie Christian pickup, so named after an early adopter, would soar in popularity. Of course, then the P90 was introduced, replacing that earlier bar magnet Charlie Christian pickup in 1946, as you can see here on this ES300 for sale at ATB Guitars from 1948. In the years that followed, as Gibson and Fender continually vied for dominance in the world of solid body electric guitars, two or even three pickups in the Strat's case would become the standard. Fender single coil, Gibson's P90, Charlie Christian pickup, their staple pickup, and their handbucking pickup, while single pickup guitars were very much relegated to the perception of being student model or entry level instruments. Of course, Gibson's Les Paul Jr., their SG Jr., and their Melody Maker, with Fender's Esquire and Music Master. And consequently, in just over a decade, single pickup guitars went from being the height of luxury to bare bones necessity instruments or a stepping stone to a better guitar. An epithet that, in all reality, I still think single pickup guitars struggle with today.
aside from any potential psychological benefits of limiting yourself with a single pickup guitar, it turns out there may actually be a more tangible scientific advantage to playing a guitar with only one pickup. The theory being that the magnetic pull of a second pickup will reduce your guitar's sustain, as explained by Fender's pickup guru, Tim Shaw. Getting rid of that drag changes the envelope of the string because we're not slowing the string down by having it interact with magnets at two points. So yes, not having that other pickup does matter. Now, whatever the reality, single pickup guitars, Les Paul Juniors in particular actually, have been a mainstay of rock and roll since their introduction in 1954, with anyone from Leslie West to Gary Moore to Keith Richards to John Lennon to Johnny Thunders to Billy Joe Armstrong have put them to incredible use over the years. And of course, it's not just Gibson and Fender that have dabbled with single pickups. A quick look around ATB earlier yielded Supros or Harmonies or Epiphones or Magnetones with single pickups, and it's clearly not not a thing of the past. In 2024, Fender, Gibson, Squire, Collings, Eastman, Reverend, Epiphone, EVH, to name but a few, are all making fantastic single pickup guitars. Now I'm going to play you out now on a somewhat modified Yamaha Revstar 502 from a few years ago, but as ever, thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe at the bell icon if you haven't already, and I shall see you next week for another episode of Friday Fretworks. Cheers guys, take care, I'll see you soon. Oh,